full of craftily worded sentences on the future of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, the statement aims to help provide some clarification around this transition and the steps for the future. But reading between the lines, it's evident the outcome of negotiations with the Queen are not quite what Prince Harry had hoped for when he and his wife, Meghan Markle, decided to step back from royal life. Below are five things we've learned from their statement. 1. The loss of Sussex Royal is a bitter one. News emerged last week that Meghan and Harry might not be able to use the word royal in their branding any longer. The couple had hoped to take their brand, Sussex Royal, forwards as part of a website, non-profit foundation and social media feed. The loss of this is a major blow to the couple, who have spent tens of thousands of pounds building their empire. They had applied for the Sussex Royal trademark at the same time as they announced their decision to step back from royal duties. But in the statement on Friday, the couple state they have agreed not to use the name Sussex Royal, or any other iteration of royal, due to specific UK government rules. However, they add, while there is not any jurisdiction by the monarchy or cabinet office over the use of the word royal overseas, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex do not intend to use Sussex Royal or any iteration of the word royal in any territory, either within the UK or otherwise, when the transition occurs spring 2020. This is their attempt to make a point, if they want to use royal overseas, there's nothing anyone can do to stop them. However, Following their transition this spring, they will drop the term on request of the Queen. 2. They feel they've been treated differently to other members of the family. The statement says, while there is precedent for other titled members of the royal family to seek employment outside of the institution, for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, a 12-month review period has been put in place. While it's not clear exactly who they're referring to, there are the likes of Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie, both of whom are princesses of York and both of whom have their own careers. Meghan and Harry's statement shows they feel like the 12-month transition period puts them in a different category, one which perhaps they aren't too keen on. 3. They didn't get the model they wanted in the negotiations. The statement says, the preference of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex was to continue to represent and support Her Majesty the Queen albeit in a more limited capacity, while not drawing on the sovereign grant. The statement adds, a few sentences later, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex understand that they are required to step back from royal duties and not undertake representative duties on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen. This would be another blow to the couple, who initially hoped to be able to use their positions to continue working on behalf of the monarchy, which has enabled them to undertake work close to their hearts. 4. They will be allowed to keep their patronages for now. Despite losing their roles as representatives, Meghan and Harry will still be patrons of their respective organizations. The statement says, it was agreed that the Duke and Duchess will no longer be able to formally carry out official duties for the Queen or represent the Commonwealth, but they will, however, be allowed to maintain their patronages, including those that are classified as royal patronages. This indicates the Queen has given them permission to keep working with the patronages she has approved, which might go some way to compromise with the couple for loss of their representative status. These patronages, however, aren't necessarily expected to last forever. For example, Meghan has been given until Easter to prove her value as royal patron of the National Theatre, according to a top West End producer. She was gifted the honour last January by the Queen, who had been the National's patron for 45 years. 5. They will still receive funding for security. While financial independence remains a cornerstone of the couple's plans to move away from their royal roles, there is a caveat. The statement says the couple will become privately funded members of the royal family with permission to earn their own income and the ability to pursue their own private charitable interests. The couple said they want to live a more independent life in order to remove the supposed pubic interest justification for media intrusion into their lives. Basically, they want to have the right to their privacy reinstated in a way the royal family, who claim money from the taxpayer, doesn't quite have. However, 
There's a catch, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will continue to require effective security to protect them and their son. This is based on the Duke's public profile by virtue of being born into the royal family, his military service, the Duchess' own independent profile, and a shared threat and risk level documented specifically over the last few years. The details of where this money will come from are unclear, but protection for Meghan and Harry is estimated to cost taxpayers in Canada and the UK between £3 million and £6 million a year, as staff were crowned a clock two weeks at a time.